Hello, welcome to Life Together at Southern Hills. Thanks for taking some time and checking out uh, this video. This video series is a way for us to share moments of formation, mission, and information from across our congregation at Southern Hills. Today, I'm really excited to have two special guests with me from a really important ministry here in Lexington, Common Good. When we share ministry moments from our connection partners, these videos are a little bit longer, and it's done for a reason. See, it's my hope that you can get a much better feel for how we connect with these ministries that we're a part of. And I know many of our family at Southern Hills are, are ongoing supporters of Common Good, so this will be a great way to see what's been going on. If you know nothing about this ministry, then sit back and soak up the incredible work that my friends Laura, Dorcas, and their team are doing. So again, settle in, enjoy, and uh, let's see what God is going to do as we share this ministry moment together. Hey friends, I'm joined today uh, by some friends of mine, uh, some friends of ours here at Southern Hills. Uh, this is Laura and Dorcas from Common Good, and it is uh, an incredible opportunity to be uh, to spend this time with you all today. Normally around this time of year, uh, you all join us in worship, and we get to hear about the ministry and glory sightings and the life at Common Good. Um, but with this pandemic, uh, it's a little bit harder than normal, so thanks for joining me on screen and sharing a little bit of life with us uh, here at Southern Hills. For those who aren't aware or may who or maybe have forgotten, um, can y'all give us just a little bit of a history and, and scope of the ministry and the work at Common Good? Sure, it's good to be with you, Jim. Hello, Southern Hills. We miss you guys and wish we could be in person, but grateful we have this opportunity to share with you all um, today. So if you don't know, Common Good is a ministry that's located in North Lexington. We're on North Limestone in the basement of Embrace Church, right across from Arlington Elementary, which is a familiar area to many of you because of your longstanding partnership with that school. We do community development work with students and families. And what that looks like for us is daily after school and summer programming. So we have students in our space year round in grades kindergarten through 12, and we walk alongside them. We encourage their educational growth, their creativity, their leadership, um, we kind of commit to the whole person, the whole family, and we make a long-term commitment to them. So we've been doing this work in North Lexington now for eight years, and you all have been a partner with us for most of those years and have supported us, and uh, many of you have even been to our space. So that's kind of an overview of what we do. Um, Dorcas, I don't know if you'd want to share a little bit about college readiness or, you know, more specifics about our programs and some of the stuff that we have going on at Common Good. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Dorcas Kandu, and I'm the Assistant Elementary Program Director at Common Good. I am also a Common Good graduate and a graduate of Cincinnati Christian University. Um, so just like as Laura said, we um, some of the pillars that we focus on are um, recreation, education, spiritual formation, and leadership. And the students come in each and every, each and every day and um, every day we focus on those pillars and they come and have a one meal and um, they get homework help or get tutoring help. After that, they um, get to participate in either club time, which could be um, art or cooking or urban ninja. Um, and I get to um, have the privilege of being with the kids every time that they participate in the club times because they really love those and I love seeing them engage in, in those um, activities. It, uh, Pastor Jill and I got to come and be on campus not long ago, I guess, before all this madness started. And I just got to say, when walking with you all and watching you, Dorcas, share about those ministries and the clubs and watching you come alive, sharing about that was just absolutely one of the joys of that entire uh, tour at the time. So that was just a little extra. So, but it was a lot of fun to see. You know, you know, it's it's great that you're with us because I know, Dorcas, you are no stranger to Southern Hills. Uh, you've been with us many times and shared this story with us. So I know I got a lot of friends who are going to be saying, what's going on? What's going on in your life? How are things going? So can you know, can you give us a little update about what's going on in your life? Well, right now, um, I'm working at Common Good, and that has been a blessing, um, just being a part of Common Good and the ministry that um, it is and just the impact that it's um, doing to the community. I'm really grateful to be a part of that. Um, alongside of that, I am um, taking my prerequisites for PA school. So right now, um, with the pandemic, I am um, just waiting to take some online classes and whatever else will open, but I am 
taking those prerequisites so that I can prepare for PA school, hopefully um, apply next year. You mentioned the pandemic, and uh, that's why we're here, why we're doing this video, uh, this, this conference this way. So can you share just a little bit what's been going on at Common Good in the midst of this pandemic? How's life like been these good grief 13 weeks? Sure. Yeah, it's been a really strange time. I think we've spent the first couple of weeks trying to wrap our head around what was going on and how to best respond. As a leader, I've been incredibly proud of our staff. Um, they really didn't skip a beat, you know, as our programs closed, which is really what Common Good um, focuses on is our daily programs, um, our daily presence in the lives of students and families. When that's no longer an option, you have to get cre pretty creative about how you show up for people. And so our staff has done a phenomenal job of just adjusting and re-envisioning what our work can look like. Really, we focus on community development work in general. So we're doing that long, um, long-term commitment, walking along students and families, helping them um, dream for their future and walking alongside them as they pursue those dreams. When you're in the middle of a pandemic, it's really hard to be thinking about the future. You're thinking about what's going on in my life today. Can I pay my electric bill? Who's gonna watch the kids? Do I have a job? Who's hungry in the home? And so our staff have adjusted um, incredibly and have been helping our families with food and basic necessities for the past 11 or 12 weeks. We've been buying things like meat, rice, vegetables, fruit, other things that are needed like diapers and soap, um, towels, uh, paper towels and toilet paper. So each Monday we call our families. We have about 43 of them. We check in on them. We say, how are things going? Um, what are the needs? What's the employment situation? How are the kids doing? Um, how can we help? And we're calling because we want to offer tangible help if there's a need, but we also just want families to know that they're not alone. And that's really, I think, the most important part of what we're doing. It's providing, it's meeting the need, but it's also letting families know whatever you're facing, whether it's inside the home, outside the home, whether it's a mental health issue or something altogether, we're going to, you know, face this together. And just because our programs aren't in session doesn't mean we're not with you. So we also did some online tutoring that went throughout the school year to make sure that our students weren't falling behind, um, you know, while they were doing online school. And we continued our mentor relationships through video chat. Um, to kind of answer your question about how it might be impacting some of our families, many of our families, if not most, have lost hours. And so it's been a real immediate need. A lot of our families aren't in a financial position where they lose hours or they lose a job and they have a big cushion you know, in their bank account to fall back on. For many of them, when they lose a job or lose hours, there's an immediate need. We've also had some families that have lost jobs. And some of our families at Common Good, they're not eligible for benefits like unemployment or SNAP benefits. And so for them, there's even this extra layer of panic of, um, you know, this is completely unknown. I don't know if my family is going to have a house in a month. So that is a very stressful experience uh, for many of our families. Um, and something that we started doing um, that we fundraised for for about a month and we started doing just last week was helping our most impacted families with rent and utility assistance. Because when we were making those calls on Monday, you know, families were identifying, we don't know if we can pay the bills. We don't know where this is, where we're, our family is going to be in a month or two. So we're really grateful that we've been able to kind of start doing that. Wow. I, it, it's, uh, my my family is a part of Common Good, and there are seven people in the house. I'm sorry. What were you saying? No, go ahead. Go ahead. There's seven people. Did you say something? <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, my family is a part of Common Good, and in the house, there's seven people. Um, before the pandemic, my my dad had a job, but he was not able to work for two months until recently. So you can imagine how stressful that was for him to provide for the family. So talking to my parents, they've been really, really grateful of the help that they have received from Common Good. But Common Good has been able to fill in gaps for them, such as food assistance and supplies. And honestly, with the big family that we have, it has really brought a peace of mind that they have now in the midst of everything that's going on. And um, as Laura was saying, we do weekly check-ins with the families and one of my roles is doing the weekly check-in. And I get to call the families and talk to them and ask them how they're doing and see if there's any need that they have that common good um, can accommodate with them. And 
I'm seeing how each family is uniquely impacted and just I've had the privilege of walking alongside them in the midst of everything that has been going on. That sounds like uh, it's it's for sure one of those ministry, hands-on ministries, even when you can't be close. And uh, mm -hmm. I love the fact that those uh, those phone calls uh, give a give that chance to be really in connection. It's really well. That that sounds like a glory sighting. Being able to to share those uh, those moments and those phone calls. Uh, what what other glory sightings have you all seen um, that that you'd love to share with Southern Hills? Because I know there's a bunch going on. But what what, what else do you want to share? Yeah, it's been pretty just amazing, you know, in the midst of a pandemic where there are a lot of things that are kind of on our list of, you know, things we're lamenting, things we're sad about, things we're grieving, that God has shown up in some pretty beautiful ways at Common Good. And, you know, this is a season, of course, for graduates. Probably some of the people watching this video are a graduate, have a graduate, um, are connected to graduates. And so we've had five graduations that we've celebrated in the last couple of weeks. We had another college graduate. Um, so I stray away, joined Dorcas as one of Common Good's college graduates. She's our fourth, fourth. four, wow. it's a big deal. And she graduated from Asbury University. And so we're so proud of her. She is considering uh, becoming a physical therapist. She actually had an internship that turned to a job with a physical therapist. So she's going to be, um, I think it's called a PTA, a physical therapy assistant. So she's going to get some hands-on experience. So we're just celebrating with her. She's a first-generation college student our college graduate now. And so it's just a huge celebration for her family, our entire community, just so proud of her and um, the mountains that she's moved, you know, the last four years. And then we have four high school graduates, including Dorcas's brother, uh, Ben. And so we're excited. Um, they're going to be going to BCTC, um, EKU, and then Ben, Dorcas's brother, will be going to Coastal Carolina and South Carolina. So we're just really excited about, you know, the different things they're going to study. We have some people who are going to be pre-dental, we have a, you know, a business major, we have somebody who's considering athletic training, a social worker. So, you know, our kids are being um, trained up to dream for their futures. And now they're pursuing those dreams, which is just living into our mission and vision. And for me, it just doesn't get, you know, any better than that. So right. that's a huge celebration. <laughs> um, and then the other thing that's, this might be news to some of you all, we started a business in the past year, and it's a social enterprise to employ our students and our graduates. And we kind of had a soft launch in the fall at our fundraising breakfast. We sold some of our first products. And then really the past six months, we've hired some more staff, we've hired some students, and we've been developing some new products. And the social enterprise, we're making home goods, and we're doing that through ceramics, so pottery type things. Planters, which Jim, I think you have a planter behind you. <laughs> I do, and it's growing. Look at it. It's doing Look so well. growing. <laughs> it's, that common, it's that common good magic we sprinkle in. Right on. <laughs> And we've been making things like dessert plates and pitchers and utensil holders and um, large bowls for fruit. We are working on launching a new product this week. I don't think I'm supposed to tell actually what it is till Friday, but I'm going to, um, this will air Sunday, right? So I don't know when this is going to air, but it's going to be months. And so we're making mugs. So if you're interested at all in handmade local products, this is for you. And to be honest, they're beautiful. A lot of people have told us, that they wanted to support common goods. So they just ordered, you know, uh, an item and they received it and they're like, Oh, this is actually good. <laughs> like they kind of assumed, well, if students are making it, do they really know how to do this? <laughs> We've had people who were already in the past month had ordered a second and third time. So the name of that social enterprise is matched at goods, which you can go to our website and check out the products for yourself. And so we're, you know, paying students a fair wage. They're getting opportunities to design and to make the product. So they're, creativity is being fueled. They're using their culture and their experiences to create something beautiful for your home. And then also they're just learning about entrepreneurship, which is huge. So, you know, really through a social enterprise, we're creating opportunities for leaders to be developed. So that's been really exciting. And that's picked up here in the last month, especially we've been selling a lot of product and really the pandemic hasn't impacted our ability to continue to do that work, which we've been grateful for. Great. Yeah, I get people asking me about this all the time. So I love that it's here. And again, I love that I haven't killed the, the succulent. So that's wonderful. <laughs> <too>, so. <laughs> um, what, what, I mean, I, again, I know there's, there's other things. Um, you know, Burgess just mentioned Ben's going to Eastern Carolina. Uh, are you okay with little brother going that far? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he'll, he'll visit. And it's, I think it'll be a good place for him to just grow and develop and, you know, be who he wants to be. So 
Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. I'm pretty excited because he's going to be playing Division One soccer, which is his kind of passion in life and something he's been working towards really since elementary school. So that's a pretty big, big accomplishment for him. We're really proud of him. Very cool. Very cool. So, um, well, you know, we, we've, we've, in the midst of this pandemic, it's kind of hard to plan. Uh, I know, Laura, you and I talked about that earlier before we got on this conference about what's next, how do you do this in the pandemic? But normally we'd be talking about summer programs and, and what you're all going to be doing. What's, what's next for, uh, for you all? Where, where are we going um, as best you can kind of figure out in the midst of this mess? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, as I was sharing with you earlier that it's hard to be kind of definitive in your plans, which I know everyone who's trying to plan anything in their life right now fully can, you know, resonate with. Right now, we're trying to evaluate if we can do some version of a summer program. You know, there's new child care guidelines that were released by the governor this past week. So our staff is looking at that this week to see what can we do? How can we do it? Can we be safe? You know, um, and can we still live into our mission? What does that look like kind of in this new reality? So we're still in those conversations. We'll be sure to let you all know what we decide. If we're able to do a summer program, it would probably be a shorter version and we wouldn't be able to have all the students in the space at one time. So it'd probably be something that was staggered, but that's kind of up in the air right now. What we do know is that we are gonna continue to provide food assistance, assistance with basic necessities and rent and utility. And the reason that we know that we're gonna continue to do that is because our families have articulated to us, this is a need, we need help. And we believe that God has placed us in this neighborhood for a reason. Um, we've learned from our neighborhood. We've learned from our students and families. I tell Dorcas this, but she's been one of my greatest teachers. And so we want to stay close to the heart of our students and families right now, not only because they have needs we'd like to support, but because that's where we think God's calling us to be. Um, this, there's no other place I'd rather be than in our neighborhood right now and kind of working through this together. So for us right now, a big goal is to continue to fundraise so that we can help with those needs because all of this that we're doing every week when we buy groceries, you know, for 30 families, every, every week when we're, you know, helping with rent and utility assistance, that's above and beyond our budget. Right. So for me, we have to continue to fundraise like we normally would because that's part of a ministry and part of a nonprofit. But all of that is beyond, you know, what we plan to do for the year. So for us, it's been building new partnership partnerships. It's been inviting people who've been in partnership with us before to join us right now and to say, this is a tangible way you can help students and families in North Lexington who are hurting and who are left out of some of the benefits that other people have access to. Yeah, it's definitely seems to be um, an opportunity to, uh, to be very tangible and working against fear, right? Uh, I remember yeah. you all talking in the past about how fear is a big, um, a, a big enemy in the ministry that you all fight against. And so to be able to, to tangibly work into those areas is a great way to, to combat that fear. Um, yeah. how, how can the folks at Southern Hills step into that in the most tangible way possible? Yeah, you know, kind of like you mentioned earlier, you know, this time of year, normally we're in person, we're face to face. I'm telling you all about the summer program we have planned and inviting you to be financial partners. And it's always just a tremendous blessing to make that ask. Sometimes people ask me, how do you fundraise? You know, do you like fundraising? And I do because I like um, inviting people to be part of what we do because I believe in it. And I think it's an invitation. I think it's an opportunity to, to be at work um, in the kingdom of God. So I love asking people to be part of what we're doing. But this year, the ask is a little bit different. We don't know what's going on with summer program, but we know that our families have really tangible basic needs that aren't being met. And so I wanted to invite you all to partner with us right now this summer in helping meet some of those needs, making sure our students have food in the summer months, making sure their families have access to food, making sure things just have things like cleaning supplies so they can be safe, access to hand sanitizer, you know, toilet paper, all those basic things that make life possible. And also making sure that families aren't, you know, losing homes or, you know, electricity, water in the coming months are going to be shut off. You know, there was um, a stay on those things, people being evicted or utilities being shut off, but I don't expect that to last for forever. And some families are really falling behind and they're falling behind in such a way that they're not going to be able to get out of this hole without some assistance. So what I'd love to ask is for you to, guys to consider partnering with us. And what I'd like you to specifically consider is to give $250 to help our families in this time. 
what our hope is, is that the Southern Hills community would uh, come up with 20 people who could help, um, you know, at that level of $250. So that would be a tremendous blessing to us as we continue to walk alongside our students and families. Um, I think, you know, you talked about fear. And I think if I have one fear right now, it would be that we might not be able to continue to help students and families at this level um, because we've been fundraising really hard, but then we're giving those resources out. And so we have to have some other people come alongside us right now to continue to do this work. Right. And so, if, so, so we're looking $250, 20 people, 20 families to be able to, to, to help us fill that, that gap. Um, what about practical, tangible things? I mean, are you are you collecting like wipes and and hand sanitizers and things like that as well? Yes, we will accept those. We are trying to minimize the number of people who are in our space. Our staff are still working full time and in, in our space. If you have a if you find things on a good deal or you kind of run into a lot of items that other people are having a hard time purchasing and you want to purchase those for us, you are welcome to kind of drop those off. We're kind of scheduling that so you can drop it at the door. And those are the main items that we're kind of accepting would be like the uh, the toilet paper, the hand sanitizer, the wipes, those kind of things. Those are some of the items, uh, hardest items to find right now for our staff. Um, the other items, if you want to participate and help purchase like food, you can contact our staff and we could give you a specific list of needs. Cool. For sure. well, people could always bring those things here too. To the church, to the main campus, sure, that's can always yeah, yeah. down to you as well. That way, we can minimize that that uh, the social distancing things that we've got to do. So yeah. we could very much do that. Dorcas, Dorcas, what have we left out? What have we missed out on this <laughs> this conversation? Um, we covered a lot. Um, I think something that I'm thinking about is the unique relationships that have been developed throughout the pandemic. Um, we have been doing the weekly calls, but we also check in with the students. And that has been really fun. Um, we check in on them twice a month and we either play a game or some of the other mentors and students have been playing Simon Says and it's a really awkward time right now. So um, a lot of people are dealing with a lot. So um, just talking with the students, thinking about what they're going through, but also sharing this common interest there has been like an open door for um, a deepening of relationship. And I'm like, I'm really enjoying seeing that. Um, I got to talk to some of the students yesterday and I'm thinking about just how our relationship has become stronger because of what has been going on. And I'm just thinking about the future and what, um, what it holds for us. Well, it's, it's exciting to know that even in the midst of this, there's, there is a future, there is a, there is a hope. God's, you know, as the governor says, we're going to get through this. We're going to get through it together. We, we've heard that a lot, but uh, I'm just so excited to be able to hear and to spend the time with you all hearing what God's doing and, and how we can partner, continue our partnership with you all. Um, and I've been personally uh, a big fan of Common Good, and my family has been ongoing supporters of this ministry for the last several years. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm part of a church that wants to do that too. So I didn't have to introduce Common Good here. It was great. So uh, I'm really thrilled about that. <laughs> Tell us how we can get any more and additional information um, from Common Good. Yeah, if you have any idea about how you might want to partner with us, you can send me an email. Uh, my email is laura, L-A-U-R-A, at commongoodlex.org. So feel free to reach out to me if you have any ideas about how you can join us in our work. And then you can go to our website to make a donation, which is commongoodlex.org. And there is a um, donate button and you can donate to us online. If you prefer to send a check, that is perfectly acceptable too. Our physical mailing address is 1015 North Limestone, Lexington, Kentucky, 40505. So those are the ways to kind of reach out to us and get in connection with us. Um, if you, you know, have any other ideas, you can also contact Jim and he could point you in the right direction too. So I also just want to say to you all, thank you. Um, thank you, Jim, for giving us this platform and an opportunity to still connect with you amidst this challenging time. And thank you all for loving us and praying for us and continuing to be um, on this journey with us. It means a lot. This is a very lonely time, I think, to be doing this work, but we feel less lonely because we have partners like you. So we just um, count that as a tremendous blessing from God and are so grateful for 
how faithful you all have been over the years. When we think of you, there's kind of two words that come to my mind. And one of them is faithful and the other is joyful. You all have joyfully and faithfully supported us and just want you to know that we love you and we miss you. Well, we love you all too. And so glad that we can be uh, in partnership and ministry with you all. So thanks for spending this time. And, um, and we're hoping we can find these 20 people and, and we can continue to, to find new and exciting ways to be in ministry together. So until we see each other, hopefully in person soon, uh, grace and peace. And again, thanks for, for the time. Okay, see you. Bye. Thanks again for taking time to join us on Life Together. Please check out the Common Good website for more ways to get involved. If you want to drop off any supplies that were mentioned in the video, you can bring them to the church office. Just make sure you label them for us, Common Good, and I'll make sure they get over the limestone uh, as quick as we can. Please, if you have the ability and you feel your heartstrings tugged, you want to help out with the needs of this vital ministry in North Lexington, I hope you will do so today. I know our, our church loves to support this ministry, and your gift will go a long way to blessing the families of Common Good. Next week on Life Together, I'm going to share some of the additional information on our reopening plan as we look forward to June 21st, Father's Day, to get back together. Until next time, thanks for sharing a little bit of Life Together with me today. And I'll be seeing you soon. Grace and peace.